Tonight, a local eye doctor wants to overturn a Texas law that she says is costing patients time and money. It's a state fair that some say can make or break a presidential campaign. Steve Spreester is in Iowa tonight to help us understand the importance. Plus, in the wake of the weekend's two mass shootings in two cities, the debate is once again underway about who or what is to blame. We'll talk about what research shows about some of the possible factors. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming live from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Doctors are fighting the state of Texas to be able to give medications to patients directly, skipping the pharmacy altogether. Currently, it's against Texas law for doctors to do that. A San Antonio doctor is one of two leading the fight to overturn that law. Sarah Acosta spoke with the eye doctor who says that the law is irrational and if overturned, it would save patients money, time and be better for their health. Just hassle and just the time it takes. Veronica Saldana has glycoma. If she misses a day or two of taking her drops, her pressure in her eye could spike, which can quickly lead to blindness. She says if she were able to get her drops directly from her doctor, she wouldn't run into that risk. She says when her prescriptions are too expensive or are not in stock at the pharmacy, she is forced to go without them for days at a time. So, uh, and I went without. And oftentimes I, you know, did that for a while until another solution could come up. It's for reasons like Saldana, San Antonio ophthalmologist Dr. Chris Held is one of the two Texas doctors suing the state to overturn a law that doesn't allow doctors to dispense medication from their offices. A ban on physicians dispensing is really irrational. There are two exceptions. Doctors in rural locations can give medication if there is not a pharmacy within 15 miles. You know. Am I any more capable of dispensing because my office is by CVS or if I'm out in the country? No. Or doctors can get a pharmacist license, which would require them to complete four years of pharmacy school. Dr. Held says if they were able to sell medicine to patients from their office, it would save patients time, money, and be better for the patient's health. Dr. Held argues that this is not about physicians making money. She wants to sell medication at cost. She says it's about preventing pharmacies from making money off of patients. There's so many middlemen involved between the doctor prescribing and the patients getting the medications that there's just so much money going out to feed the insurance company. We reached out to the groups being sued, the Texas Medical Board and the Texas State Board of Pharmacy. Both declined to comment. The Texas Pharmacy Association didn't get back to us, but on its website it states, if the law was overturned, it would threaten patient health and safety. Dr. Held said there is no evidence to back up the safety claim. In fact, there's a study that may suggest that after dispense, visits to urgent care and visits to the ER are lower after physician dispense than pharmacy dispense. And that was Sarah Costa reporting. Tonight, a vigil held in front of San Fernando Cathedral as a show of solidarity with El Paso and Dayton, Ohio. The vigil honored the 31 lives lost in those two mass shootings and allowed advocates to call for change. The Texas Organizing Project, Pro-Immigration Coalition, and SA Stands were behind the event. It also was held to protest President Donald Trump. Meantime, the president visited El Paso and Dayton today to meet with the victims and first responders in those shootings. On the ground in both cities, both supporters and protesters. Also today, Governor Greg Abbott announced $5 million in state funding for El Paso recovery. After meeting with several city leaders there, Abbott said that he plans to hold roundtables about some of the issues. Those issues include domestic terrorism, online hate and gun safety, but for some that's not enough. State Representative Roland Gutierrez is ramping up efforts to push for a special session on gun safety. Gutierrez first called for a special session earlier this week, but now he's using a petition to put pressure on the governor. He released a statement tonight saying in part, quote, I don't doubt that the governor takes the issue seriously, but his proposed roundtable is not a serious proposal to try and solve this issue. So far, Representative Gutierrez has received more than 60 signatures on that petition. It is more than just a state fair. The presidential candidates' appearances in Iowa are believed to have the power to make or break them. Our Steve Spreester is reporting from Iowa this week, the state where he grew up. He joins us now live to talk about what we can expect and why this is so important, Steve. Hi from Iowa. First, let's talk about the Texas connection. Congressman, former Congressman Beto O'Rourke, he was supposed to be there this week, but because of what happened this weekend, he's not making that appearance anymore. 
Yeah, he was actually supposed to appear here live from the Iowa State Fair on Friday morning, about two hours after San Antonio Mayor, former San Antonio Mayor Julian Castro was supposed to take the stage here. And, you know, it, it's understandable, and I know a lot of people that I talked to tonight certainly understand Congressman O'Rourke wanting to stay in El Paso and not campaign actively until that settled down a little bit out there and perhaps a lot of the funerals and memorials are done. Meanwhile, you know, this state fair doesn't open until tomorrow morning and it is a hub of activity tonight. There are people all over the place, but nothing like what's going to happen over the next few days. Myra, just think about it between now and Sunday, 21 Democratic candidates for president will take a small stage. It's called the Soapbox Stage. It's sponsored by the Des Moines Register, which is the local newspaper here. They have 20 minutes to get up in front of a crowd and talk, and then they will mingle among the crowd. And uh, like you said, a lot of people think this is a make or break event for presidential candidates, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Republican candidate, the first one to ever campaign at the Iowa State Fair back in the 1950s, Myra. We also have our, our San Antonio connection making an appearance there this week. Former Mayor Julian Castro, yeah. why is this such an important time for him? Well, he takes the stage at 9 a.m. on Friday morning, and you talked about how this is a crucial part of the campaign for Julian Castro. He does not have a lot of uh, you know, traction that he's been gaining in the state of Iowa. He hopes to maybe turn that around, perhaps starting here at the Iowa State Fair. But he also hasn't qualified for the next debate yet. The debate in September in Houston, he still needs one more favorable poll result before he qualifies for that September debate. By the way, the other Texan former Congressman Beto O'Rourke has already qualified for the September debate. So this is a crucial stretch of days here for the Castro campaign. So we're talking about some pretty heavy implications for presidential candidates. Meantime, we have a giant Ferris wheel behind you and booths that are probably serving up something <laughs> fried and delicious. So why is this fair so important for who could become our next president? Isn't this a slice of Americana, a giant Ferris wheel behind me and all kinds of food on a stick all over the place? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a state. The state of Iowa has three million people in it. It's expected that one and a half million people will visit the Iowa State Fair. So you're going to get a really good cross section of the state just by coming within the, you know, three block area that makes up the fairgrounds here in Des Moines. So this is a critical place. It has always been, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, if you want to be the nominee for president, this is usually a very important stop along the way. And we will be here tomorrow and Friday to cover the candidates. Joe Biden, by the way, one of the first candidates who will speak tomorrow uh, from the soapbox stage, which is about 200 feet away from me right now. All right, personal question for you. Anything you as an Iowan are looking forward to being there? I've already seen it, Myra. There is a five and a half foot tall butter cow. <laughs> it is a cow made, made of butter, uh, a dairy cow made of butter. I got to interview the woman who since 2006 has, I guess you can say, been the butter cow creator. There's also a butter big bird, a butter Oscar the Grouch. Uh, a butter television. Um, you know, I just hope she didn't spread herself too thin. <laughs> well, we better see more of you later this week. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll see you guys tomorrow and Friday. All right. By the way, the butter cow may be my spree thoughts on Friday, just in case you wondered, Myra. I would love to expand more on that. So hopefully that happens. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Live from Iowa tonight. All right. Now, Steve will have more from Iowa tonight at 10 and all week on our website. You can catch his coverage on KSAT.com. Just click on the politics section. Now let's turn to the nine at nine. These are some of the biggest stories making headlines around the world, around the country and right here at home. A manhunt lasting weeks in Canada may finally be over. Local arson investigators are looking into a string of overnight fires and a woman now says she probably shouldn't have tried to take a picture with an octopus after a painful encounter. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. Police in Canada believe they have found the bodies of two teens suspected of killing three people last month. The bodies were discovered on a riverbank about five miles from where the suspects burned car was found in July. 
An autopsy to confirm the identities has not been completed yet, but police say that they are confident that they belong to 19-year-old Cam McLeod and 18-year-old Brian Schmajelski. Some terrifying confusion in Times Square overnight after the sound of a motorcycle backfiring is mistaken for gunshots. Video captured people running away following that loud noise. Some people were hurt in the chaos. Luckily, none of those injuries were life-threatening. A home where a Wisconsin teenager was kidnapped and her parents were murdered has now been torn down. 13-year-old Jamie Claus grew up in that home and lived there with her family. But in October, Jake Patterson broke in, killed the girl's parents, and took Jamie captive for months. During Patterson's sentencing, Claus said she never wanted to see that house again. Patterson was sentenced to life in prison. A three-year-old girl in China survives after being hit and run over by a car. The girl was playing in a driveway when it happened. The driver apparently did not see her. The girl was taken to a hospital where she was treated for minor injuries. Here at home, an arrest made in a string of overnight fires on the west side. The fire department says the suspect set fire to brush and trash in at least half a dozen places. And then, uh, and then this latest rash came about 3.30 or so, and that's when all three of them happened at the same time. Arson investigators are trying to figure out if the suspect acted alone. Video from Minnesota shows a semi-truck rollover and crash coming to rest just feet away from a gas station. The driver says he lost control when his truck's brakes went out. No one was hurt. The USA Today offices in Virginia evacuated due to concerns about a man with a weapon. Police say they received the tip from a 911 caller. A few hours after the initial call, officers confirmed they found no evidence of any threat. A Washington state woman ends up regretting her photo op with an octopus. The woman hooked it at a fishing derby and wanted to take a picture with it. But when she put the octopus on her face, it bit her. It had barreled its, its beak into my chin and then let go a little bit and did it again. The bite was venomous and the woman had to get medical help. She says that she learned her lesson. A new image from a European Southern Observatory telescope shows a nebula that is full of newborn stars. It's called the Seagull Nebula because it looks like a bird in flight. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. It is the story no one saw coming today. Not one, but two zebras on the loose in New Braunfels. We covered this as it was unfolding today at 6 o'clock. This is dash cam video that shows officers chasing one of these zebras down a street. Tonight we have learned from New Braunfels police that one zebra was caught and safely tranquilized. This is video from a viewer who recorded the tranquilized zebra being transported by helicopter. You can see it being lowered down there into what we believe is the bed of a truck. Police say that the animals escaped by swimming across the Guadalupe River. There was still a second zebra out there tonight. We've asked the police department to confirm where these zebras came from, but so far no answers to that big question. If you see a zebra roaming free in New Braunfels, don't laugh at him. If you see a zebra walking around New Braunfels, police are asking you to call them. 830-221-4100. Words I never thought I was going to say. Especially in the newscast, right? <laughs> and I got to call my cousin who lives up there and tell her to put out a big trail of carrots that leads like right to her front door. And hopefully that zebra will, or to her backyard, you know, hopefully it'll lead right there. there I have go. to say, I'm a little surprised at the undertaking, the helicopter and everything. Yeah. You'd think you could just lasso that thing, rope it and kind of tug I, it along or something, or then just tranquilize and- You got more ideas than I do. I wouldn't people know People to lift it into a truck or something, I don't know. Impressive operation <laughs> for a runaway zebra. <laughs> they swam across the Guadalupe River to escape. Can you blame them? I mean, the water temp's much nicer than the air temp these days. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it I'd is. So. Say we'd all like to do that. <sighs> yeah, I love that. This is just the highlight of my week. <laughs> this whole zebra story. It's so good. I even called my parents in Minnesota. I was on the phone with them earlier. Like, hey, story of the day around here is the uh, zebras that escaped in New Braunfels. My mom. Oh, oh, I know Adam. Betsy, you know my cousin. Your cousin Betsy posted it on Facebook already. <laughs> like, yep, I do. So 99. That was our high temperature. Just like yesterday, we're in the lower 90s right now. Hey, it's August in South Texas. This is what we get. 
Heat highs right overhead. This heat high is going to bring us more heat tomorrow. About 100 degrees for the high temperature. We'll start at 78 with some morning clouds, but then a sunny, bright midday and afternoon. And when you factor in the humidity, it'll feel like it's about 102 to 107 for just a few hours in the afternoon and into the weekend. Pretty much the same. We'll just add another degree or two onto that high temperature forecast. So triple digit August heat. Oh, it's here, Myra. <laughs> the second zebra is it though? No, I was just thinking <laughs> uh, we can find something here. Just not any zebras. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Still more ahead on KSAT News at 9 tonight, including the island of Puerto Rico with its third governor in less than a week. Plus, after another two mass shootings, we are once again talking about what can be done to prevent it from happening again. Tonight, we're talking about what research shows about the roles that violent video games and mental health play in these situations. That's after the break. Weeknights, streaming live, KSAT News at 9, cutting edge, live from the newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A new kind of KSAT. Now let's turn to the 9 at 9 tonight. The day's most interesting stories in just three minutes. Expect information you can put into action. Money, it's personal. Adulting hacks. What's trending online? We're talking about it. And expect some spree thoughts. A curiosity that sometimes gets me in trouble, Myra. KSAT News at 9 on your KSAT app. When life changes because of a car crash, the people you love are sometimes the ones most impacted. When tragedy strikes, the attorneys at Gomez Law will fight because it's the right thing to do for you and your family. Don't wait for ambulances and hospital bills to come pouring in. Call Gomez Law. We've proudly represented injured people for over 40 years. Gomez Law fights for a client's maximum compensation. Call the Gomez Law for now at 210-736-4040 or go online at joegomezlaw.com. Dependability. It's expected by our customers and it's demanded by me. I personally guarantee the certified techs we send to your home and the equipment we install are dependable. John Wayne's American Pride Comfort Systems are designed specifically for San Antonio's extreme heat and humidity and come with a lifetime warranty. Right now, get a complete new system with affordable monthly payments from $72 or no interest up to 60 months. For comfort you can depend on, call John Wayne today. With the nation still reeling from two tragic mass shootings in less than 24 hours over the weekend, many are searching for answers as to why it happened. Two of the factors that oftentimes get the blame in these situations, mental health issues and video games. National correspondent for The Washington Post, William Wan, joins us tonight. Thanks so much for being here. First of all, William, let's talk about mental health first. What kind of role does mental health or does it not play uh, in, in mass shootings, according to some research that's been done. Mental health plays some role in, 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 in these shootings, um, but it, it's not a driver of, of these mass shootings. So whenever one of these shootings happens, you see all the politicians say, you know, we need to fix the mental health problem in our country. These were clearly disturbed individuals. And yet, uh, you know, there was one study by FBI um, that showed only 25% of these mass shooters had some kind of mental health diagnosis. Uh, another study in 2015 showed only 22% of these mass shooters had some kind of diagnosable mental illness. How about video games? That's another thing that we have heard a lot of discussion about in the last few days. What yeah. kind of influence have they had on previous mass shooters? Almost none, according to the research we've seen. Um, you know, video games have been talked about as a problem with these mass shootings ever since all the way back to Columbine, if you think to 1999. And yet when, you know, over two decades of research, the, the, the correlation between violent video games and mass shootings is almost, you know, there's no statistical link to it. Um, I think one thing, the key thing to keep in mind is video games are sold all around the world. There are countries where video, violent video games are played even more than the U.S. When you think of South Korea or China, but they don't have anywhere near the mass shootings we do. Same with mental illness. There's mentally ill people in every country of the world, but U.S. is the only one with mass shooting after mass shooting at the rates that we have. 
So the key thing here to, to think about is like, what is the difference? Is it mental illness or violent games? And according to research, that's not it. I don't think we can have this conversation without talking about guns. What sort of role um, has that played? And, and you talk about those other countries. What's the contrast yeah. between us and those other countries when it comes to these weapons? It, it, as, you know, as a reporter, it's hard to talk about this without, I try not to politicize it, but if you just stick to the research, the one outlying factor when it comes to U.S. and other countries is guns, so you do have to bring it up. Um, you know, there's uh, surveys of gun ownership around the world. U.S. is like this. It's just far and above uh, any other country. There's, for every 100 people in the country, there's a hundred, something like 120 guns in America. That's more guns exist in this country than there are people. You have also done some reporting on some of the predictors for uh, some of the characteristics that maybe some of the these mass shooters have in common. What are those? Sure. So I talked to a lot of forensic psychiatrists. These are people after the mass shootings that when there is a the shooter is still alive, they they interview them at length for hours and hours. The the strongest uh, correlations they see from shooter to shooter is um, a desire for infamy. There's uh, narcissistic personalities. And then the other thing that's very, very common in them is a sense of aggrievement that the world has somehow injured or hurt you or is picking on you. Um, and then there is also this whole question of access to guns. Uh, often they have own them themselves or have very easy to access to guns from someone in their family. It's a tough conversation to have and one that, you know, I, I bet we both wish we didn't have to, um, but here we are again. William Wan, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. Yeah, I so appreciate it as well. Thank you. Let's turn now to some of the biggest stories people are talking about tonight. Puerto Rico's new governor has been sworn into office. Wanda Vasquez is the island's third governor in less than a week. Ricardo Rosseo stepped down last week following the leak of inappropriate and offensive messages. On Friday, Pedro Pierluisi was sworn in, but today his governorship was declared unconstitutional by the Puerto Rico Supreme Court. Hours later, former Justice Secretary Vasquez was sworn in. Ride-sharing companies could be partly to blame for the amount of time you spend stuck in traffic. A new study looked at congestion in six major U.S. cities, including Los Angeles, Chicago, and Washington. The study found that ride-sharing was responsible for anywhere between 2% to more than 13% of all the vehicle miles traveled in a city, and only around half of those miles were actually spent driving a passenger. All right, he's back from looking for that second zebra. No dice. Not no. giving up. Here's a simple solution, too. <laughs> simple solution. Yeah, okay, simply, let's hear it. End of a long stick with a string, you put a carrot out there, right? Okay. And then, it, just like in the cartoons, it works in the cartoons. <laughs> so you just why lure wouldn't it, it work in, here? You hop on its back, right? You ride a little bareback, you yeah. put it out in front of its face, and it takes you there. Okay. That's what you We're do. We're going to have to um, call the New Braunfels Police Department and share this. I'm telling with... you. I'm telling you. I could consult with them. Okay. Could be a good I'm consultant. sure they would be happy to have a, a your loose services. zebra consultant for the new Braunfels PD. Does that fit on a business card? I don't know. Well, we'll get it to. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, we can solve this problem. All right. How about the problem of heat around here? I can kind of like lasso too, you know. Can. I think you're going to need some solid lassoing skills for a zebra. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't know how it would respond to that. I'm not exactly. I can't do the rest of it and like tie it up and all that stuff. Whatever. We need to contact some rodeo fellas. We do. That's what I was thinking. Go to the Tejas Rodeo. Get some of those guys out there on horseback. <laughs> They'll take care of it. 91. That's our temp. Dew point is 71, so it feels like it's 98 because of that real thick humidity. In New Braunfels, where the chase is on, it's 91 degrees right now. Stinson at 92. Uh, heat high, it's settling overhead. It's that time of year where this, this heat high gets very stubborn, and it's going to be really stubborn into the week or into the weekend and early next week. So of course that means dry conditions. I wish we had some rain in the forecast, but no, unless you live along the Gulf Coast, I don't think you'll see any rain. 78 in the morning, 100 by the afternoon tomorrow. And then pretty much the same story day to day to day. Here we go. We're looking at temperatures at and even slightly above 100, probably peaking at 103 as we get into Monday. Perfect time to talk about catching a zebra because it's just hot I know, outside. It's great. It's <laughs> going to be any better. All right, thanks, Adam. We'll be right back. We 
are family at South San ISD. South San provides innovative and challenging academic experiences for students and families, creating character development opportunities and inspiring future leaders. Enrollment for South San ISD's 2019-2020 school year begins the week of August 5th. Go to southsanisd.net for enrollment details. South San also welcomes back Athens Elementary, Kazan Middle School, and West Campus. We are family at South San ISD. When the unexpected happens, you want to be seen as soon as possible. Save time with check-in online from Texas Med Clinic. Find locations close to you and the shortest wait times. 16 locations in the San Antonio area, including three 24-hour locations. Texas Med Clinic Urgent Care. We treat you well. Want to save time and money? Then look for your next car, truck, or RV at Ansira.com. Thousands of vehicles at your fingertips, and that's new or pre-owned. 24-7, shop Ansira.com today. The better way to save. Hi, I'm Daniel Baldwin, and I'm a drug addict, but I've been sober for years. Every day I get emails from parents concerned about their son or daughter. Is this the time they're going to go to jail, or even worse, die? It doesn't have to be that way. Best decision I ever made, calling sober. My son's got over two years clean now. I no longer worry about the phone, except if he has to say, I love you, Dad. You're going to be a grandfather. The Sober Recovery Center. Call or text today for help. Freedom awaits. Stories you can't miss in Tense Radio. Three minutes, the nine at nine. The most interesting stories making headlines around the world, around the country, and here at home. Give us three minutes. The nine at nine, only on Case at News at nine. That is all our time tonight. Thanks so much for watching the news at 9. We'll keep you updated on that zebra. Have a good night.